Welcome to this episode of No Stupid Questions show. With the Jag and Tanya, who's taking a drink of water right now. So the topic for the day, or the, the, the question for today is, in what way do black women show the greatest amount of self-hatred? And I think that is centered around their hair. Oh um, man, you changed the question. Did I? What was yes. the question? <laughs> Maybe I, think... I couldn't remember the question. <laughs> Your question uh, originally, when you told it to me, was more of a uh, a statement turned into a question. Okay. Do, do, I believe black women. Do, do black women express or display their greatest, their greatest amount of self-hatred -hatred through, through their hair? Their hair, correct. Um, so since it's my question, <laughs> and Tanya's primping in the camera, <laughs> I'll turn it over to you <laughs> and allow, the, allow you to have the first, first, first crack at this question. Um, well, you know, there's a lot of parts to the question, which we need to talk about. To dissect, okay. Um, you know, you talked about uh, display. Display. <laughs> Is that what you said, display or express? It, I did say display. I said display when I, when I emailed you the question, but maybe Would I meant express. <laughs> if, display, if display spurs some topic of conversation, let's, let's examine it. Well, I mean, clearly your hair is a display, right? Your it's, hair on, is a display. it's on display. So, um, so when, you, when you say display, it was interesting because that's what struck me um, about the question first, because I think um, it is part of our presentation. Um, and for black women, I think there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of, well, one, what you see displayed um, on reality shows or, you know, non-reality shows, you know, your vision shows is, there's not a whole lot of natural hair. So when you talk about self-hatred and what's displayed, you can't help but think that there is some self-hatred involved because none of it is showing anything that is about, uh, you know, I guess, I, I don't know, I don't wanna say, cause black women have so many textures of hair, but you don't see, I'm, and I don't know if I need to get close up. <laughs> you don't see this on many shows or magazines or, you know, you have the random African model who's just super, super, super chocolate black. And like, you know, an Afro and you got, what's her name? The, um, the African actress and she wears her hair short, but she wears her hair super short. So you can't even really see the texture. So, right. so I, I guess my first response to your question was that there is a lot of self-hatred in what we display. Um, the last part of it that you talked about or the, the other part that I kind of struggled with was, is it their great, our greatest self-hatred? <laughs> Um, I had to think about that one because I got to think about where else, because we've been hated on both in the sort of vernacular and the sort of common slang sense and in the true sense of being hated um, for a long time. At the same time, a lot of stuff about our looks has been imitated. So um, yeah, whether or not it's the greatest expression or display, is a question for me, but I do think that our hair is often a reflection of self-hatred for a lot of people, for a lot, not, so. So tell me where the question came from. Well, and, and you know, so as usual, as we're exploring these topics, more things come up than originally contemplated. Um, and so I have to address something that you said in the middle there, and, and you said something about black women being hated. And I guess mm -hmm. I challenged that. I know, and I don't know, maybe it was Confucius or, or someone said, you know, you, you don't look at what a person says, you look at what they do. So where I have heard that people have denigrated black women about their looks because of their, their skin tone or, or whatever, I have never experienced that in action. All I've ever seen is uh 
Uh-oh. We got a, we got a connection. We got a connection uh, issue. Everything yeah, you just said got think, garbled. And I, I think I'm trying to figure out why I don't have a good connection here. I wonder if that's because what you said was... <laughs> Controversial. It's a, it's a C-O-N... <laughs> It's a CON spiracy, you know. <laughs> the network is against us. <laughs> was it? <laughs> I don't know. Say what you were going to say again. See if it happens again. <laughs> because the truth was about to be whenever the truth exactly. was about to be. <laughs> I was about to say is, I don't know who you were saying hates Black women, but I've never known, uh, or from my experience, no one does. Um, no matter where I go, in public, people may say something that's denigrating to Black women. But in private, uh, I think everyone admires, uh, is attracted to whatever you know term you want to use, Black women. Um, I think it's no secret that you have tanning salons. You don't have too many white, white men salons around the country, but you have a whole lot of tanning salons. Uh, I think it's no secret that Stairmasters became popular because it allowed other people to, to sort of mimic the bodies of that black women seem to get more naturally. Um, I don't think black women are hated. Um, maybe by association with black men, but other than that, I don't think black women are hated. So, so what, a, what about the comments about Michelle and Obama that have been negative? And I mean, would you put that in the hater category as opposed to being hated well there are always extremes right so you know some people don't like ice cream uh, but i don't <laughs> think that means ice cream is not a popular dessert uh I, I think the vast majority of people see michelle <laughs> obama and, <laughs> and, and and know that she's a queen among queens um but of course you have people on the extremes. Um, but you know, you, you well, can't worry okay. about the people on the extremes. Actually, but let's, you know, and I, lo I love, you know, my former first lady. But let's talk about that because someone, I saw a comment made online because in, in, in the, with respect to your question, I saw a comment online about how she was, you know, when they went to the island after, you know, their, you know, terms were over. Right. And she had the kind of curly fro. And they were like, yeah, Michelle. But somehow that curly fro, we didn't see when she was in the White House. Well, you asked me if, if, if people looked up or hated Michelle. You didn't ask me if she had some self-hate. Um, well, 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 Which is but, two different questions. Well, and even, but, as, but, even as strong and as great as she is, I think she missed a few opportunities to be a role model in the, um, our natural state is beautiful. I think she missed some opportunities. Well, but I, I actually related the two, cause right, I brought up this whole concept of how people have hated black women and how that translated into some of our self-hatred. And so then you were questioning this concept of the fact that black women were hated. And Correct. so I guess my thing is, I think Michelle Obama, now that I'm thinking about the whole story, is a perfect example because she kept her hair perm, pressed, whatever, you know, was going on with her hair, straightened for, you know. Right. Because I think there was this concept that when she didn't do that, when it was going to be in its natural state, that there was going to be some perception shift and I would venture to say and yes you can say we're not going to use the ice cream analogy <laughs> I would venture to say that that perception change is actually you could say that people would not like her could you go so far as to say they would hate her no may yes you know you could but I would say that that perception change was a negative perception and so that could be in that that family of hate. Well, so there are views of, of beauty. And, and I don't know if you fall outside of the, the common view of what beauty is. Does that mean people hate you? Um, so, so, you know, I, I don't know how you rationalize that. 
But we all have been brainwashed to think that Barbie is cute, that Barbie is the, the symbol of beauty. Um, and, and, and interestingly, we're having this conversation about black women. Um, white women suffer from the same thing. I agree. And, and, and you know, I just happen to know black people and black women better than I know white people and white women. So it's easier for me to talk about that. Right. And, I, and, and since I'm raising, since I'm married to a black woman, and raising to put two future black women. This is a very germane topic to me. Okay. Um, but, you know, I think white women suffer from the same thing as well. And, and the reality is, you know, people need to, it would, be, it would be more healthy to adopt an idea of beauty that encompasses something that you are. Um, and, 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 you know, unfortunately, hair, as you say, is on display. That's one of the first things people see when they look at people. Um, and we, we, we have this view that long, straight hair is what's beautiful. We've adopted shiny. that. We've accepted that. Long, straight, right. shiny hair. Okay. Uh, have like you ever, a horse's hair. Have you, well, and, and it's funny because there are, well, it's funny, sad, not funny, haha. Um, you all right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm wondering if the conspiracy is, is getting closer. They, they're trying to hush they, you. They at the windows trying to hush you up. <laughs> they try to silence me. So. My brothers Malcolm and Martin, I know what y'all were going through. And I'm just starting this journey one day. <laughs> no stupid questions. <laughs> Um, I, I, you know, uh, I think that the, I can't even remember what I was going to say. <laughs> so anyway. I, you I know, won't be silent. So let's go. On the, <laughs> <laughs> so you were talking about how I think it exists for women overall, because I think that the self-hatred is partly brought on by the fact that we're surrounded by these, like you said, images of beauty that are not us, that are not the average woman, right? I mean, that's the case for all cultures of women because when you ask about what the average size for a woman is, black, white, Chinese, you know, any kind of um, sort of race, it's not the model size that you see, you know, on 90% of the billboards and the magazines and everything. Right. So, so everybody's got some self-hatred because they can't beat Barbie. I mean, Barbie is a totally, you know, unreachable for most women. Un unrealistic. You know. Right. So, so I think that, yes, it does exist for everyone. I think just like, to be honest, anything else, Black people experience it more intensely. Um, and well, you say that, and you've said that a couple of times, but I, I guess I don't, why? Why do we experience it more intensely? I think that um, when you look at the, I mean, hair is one concept, right? Um, but if you look at <clears throat> the other characteristics, right? So, so if you say, okay, uh, so we were talking about size just now, right? So yes, very mm -hmm. few women are that size. Certainly, again, you can say Black women experience that more intensely because we tend to be, and it's, this has been proven, right? Our bones tend to be denser and thicker. Um, we have more booty, and before it used to be, you know, ideal standard of booty was pretty flat. You know, none of the models had any booty, and that wasn't, and what, you know. What neighborhood was that in? But that's what, but what I'm telling you is, if you say, why do we experience it more intensely? We, well, we, well I, and, and so wait, but what you're saying is that we've created, and I think we've done this with the body, with the hair, we haven't gotten there, and that's very interesting. Because well, with the body, we've, we've kind of gone counter to the culture and been like, no, we got our stuff. We like the booty, not the booby. You know what I mean? So that's, that's where we focus. The booty, not the booby. That's my new <laughs> thing. <laughs> that's a song right there. That's a hook right there. Trademark T. <laughs> so, so and, and that's why I wanted to stop you because no one in any, and I'm only, again, I'm, I'm you know, I'm on, I'm sub 50, so maybe I can't speak for long enough in history, but I've never known black people to admire flat behind. Never. And, but, and it's but, never something. No one ever said, ooh, I want that Barbie, that Barbie ass. I mean, nobody, nobody ever so, said that. So, but why is it that we never got to the point where 
nobody in the hood is trying to keep their hair natural for the most part. I mean, I think there have been these um, little, you know, trends like in the, you know, They've obviously in the sixties and, you know, I mean, it was kind you of had, black power stuff. The exactly. Right. But, but even then, you know, when I look at like Pam Greer and stuff, it was some extra like uh, pull out to space off row. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah. It was yeah. So it you know, out. we were still trying to shine it up as much as we do stuff that wasn't necessarily natural. And then I think there's a wave now, but but still, when again, when you look at it, yes, booties are big, and but the hair has always the standard has always been like you said, long, straight, and shiny. That has never been what our natural state is. The booty Correct. has worked, but, but somehow we've never gotten to, to the root, which is, uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> now my stuff is coming out. <laughs> they going to be knocking but, at my but, door now. So but, why is but that? the booty is the foundation, so, I mean. Mm. 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 Anyway, <laughs> so. <laughs> Ooh, we, it's late, we daffy, but go ahead. Right. Um, yeah, that is interesting, and, and I and I don't I don't disagree with you. We we're able to accept everything else about ourselves a lot more easily than the hair, and maybe that's why that word display was very important. And maybe that's why no matter greatest... what you're doing, um, other parts of your body can be hidden, but your hair is usually on display. So maybe that's why. Um, it's harder to get over if, if getting over is the right term. I don't know why you have to get over it, but you do have to get over what Fifth Avenue says beauty is. Um, well, I, but, I actually think that it also maybe um, does help me get in agreement with the greatest um, the greatest well, clearly, uh, adjective because if everything else we've it in some way, shape, or form, been able to accept, right? I mean, even Beyonce, even though I think she got a nose job, um, did talk about you know one of her songs. <laughs> now I'm gonna, so have to, so. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have the beehive coming for me now. Right. right. Um, you know, you have to back that up. <laughs> you have to find the plastic surgery. You know, ain't nobody trying to make their nose wider. They're trying to make their lips bigger. So, right, we got the big lips are on the plus, in the plus column. The big nose ain't made it yet, right? Um, I'm trying to think about anything else that we have sort of physically. So I would say the nose and the hair are competing for the things that still have not, we haven't embraced our, you know, sort of natural and um, standard of beauty. And you know we always no, be talking about people. You know you always be talking about people with a five head. But anyway, that's that's, that's, that's interesting because um, black women has have always been seen, and you can you can go back to historical documents of when Europeans first went to Africa as as highly sexual beings, right? Um, and maybe that that goes to the big behinds and the big lips. Um, hmm. and so, and, and I'm just thinking it is, oh, you know, this, this just came up, which a lot of stuff just comes up, but, you know, maybe as other people want to be highly sexual, want to be attractive, um, that's why they adopt the big lips and that's why they go get butt implants. Um, and so therefore, since they other people who don't have that naturally quickly get over that, then we're able to accept that about ourselves. But no one's going to the hair salon to get their hair um, a little tighter curled. Um, well, not kinked. So well, what's kink? So, um, so, 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 okay. What's the that, definition of kink? So, so let's go, two, two things. One is there are white women's perms, right? That's where they don't want straight hair. They want curly hair. That's their perm. Our perm is the opposite, which is kind of interesting. Okay. So okay, I knew know, white women got perms. I didn't yes. know it was to straight. I didn't their, know it was to curl. Their perms hair. create a curly. Yeah, so they can sleep and wake up and be curly. So there is a curl, you know, um, 
interest. Are their perms permanent? Uh, their perms are about as long as ours are. Okay. Until, I mean, I don't, you know, I don't know for sure. I actually haven't gone into it, but I know most of my perm information from Legally Blonde, the movie. Okay. Um, <laughs> Okay, so um, you can you can appreciate that as a lawyer because she ultimately proved a case because the woman had her curls still intact. You can't shower for the first 24 hours after you get a perm because your curls will not stay for the period of time that they stay. I don't know what that is. Okay, and and really seen the movie. So okay, um, now you must see it. Okay, now I must see the movie. So, but but if I'm gonna big up that movie, I gotta big up um, Chris Rock's good hair. Because he okay. actually explored some very interesting things about hair, which goes to um, black men's contribution, which I would want to get your opinion on. Did you see Good Hair? No, I did not. But, you know, if Chris Rock would like a little plug for his movie, he could probably get it in the corner of the, of the screen as we post this. <laughs> We can. we can have a little link we or can, something. We can do that. Yeah. <laughs> we can do that for Chris Rock. So once you see this, <laughs> hook us up. <laughs> So he did, you know, he showed that the black men in the barbershop, on the one hand, they talk about how, you know, they, uh, man, well, I don't want to get my ring, I want to, you know, get my ring stuck in there, and, you know, that kind of stuff, like, so basically saying, I don't want it to be too tight, you know, the, the kink. Um, but on the other hand, then they, you know, talk about how their wives and their sisters and their aunts and their, you know, girlfriends or whatever are spending all this money, potentially some of their money, on all his hair stuff. Like, what's, what's, why are you spending all his money? Blah, blah, blah. So, you know, you get in mixed messages from the men. And I think that causes us to be, you know, like, because obviously, you know, part of our, like you said, it's about feeling attractive, feeling sexy, feeling, and if, if you're kind of, the feedback you're getting is, you know, that long, shiny straight, then, so any thoughts on that so, from the male? Well, male? well I, I do, but this may go, you know, and I don't know what minute mark we had in this show, but this may go way left because... Um, you a way left kind of brother, but go ahead. I am, I am a way left kind of brother. <laughs> the, the problem I have with that whole concept is it, it, it premises the self, uh, the attitude about self based on how other people see you. Uh, and so I did talk about the greatest display of self-hatred was hair. I think the second highest display of, of self-hatred is a lot of times the relationships that Black women allow themselves to be part of. Um, and I know that was a time, that was a bomb that just exploded. <laughs> and Which is why I said I don't think we have time to go into that. But... but um, And I hold fast to that, and nobody's <laughs> trying to beat at the window. So like, this this is safer than the <laughs> this is safer than the other stuff we were talking about earlier. Um, yeah, I think because you mentioned before when we were in our last conversation about the whole love thing. So yeah, we right. we go put a pin in that one too. We we keep putting pins in it. I know, but, my um, ass. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll we'll get to it this, one day. It's really but, gonna explode when when we do get to it. Correct, but so I I have a hard time even talking about black men's contribution to black women's thoughts about themselves when well, my my basic premise is you have to feel good about yourself before you can expect other people to feel good about you. So why even talk about how black men feel about this black woman and how that affects her before we talk about how she feels about herself? <clears throat> you know, I feel like... You got real serious on me. I... <laughs> you ain't even smiling no more. <laughs> you... <laughs> and this is very, I will tell you, I will tell you, honestly, this is very personal for me. I grew up, um, uh, you know, with a sister whose hair was soft, right? So it was always, okay. you know, half an hour to straighten her hair and an hour and a half to straighten mine, you know? Sounds like my daughter's. Yes. Okay. So um, 
So I was always, you know, I mean, all the comments were always, oh, Lord, we got, oh, yeah, this you know, it was just complaining when they had to get to me. Um, and, um, you know, and, and of course, you know, comments out in the street, oh, we were upstairs doing all oh, Tanya's hair and all oh, she does. And, you know, my sister was the one with the quote unquote good hair, right? So I became very, very, I mean, certainly as I got older, you know, and after college and everything, I just, that statement, <clears throat> that phrase would set me off. Um, okay. And um, I think it's, it's this concept of dying by a thousand cuts, right? So you have the media showing you that your hair is as, as natural is not right. You have um, your, you know, in my case, I had my parents telling me, Oh, the roof. Oh, yeah. do something. Oh, you know. <laughs> um, and then you have, especially you know, when you're a teenager, if you do have the people that you're interested in, you know, I mean, you got the hormones raging and blah blah blah, and the people that you're interested in, you know, they might say something if your hair, your kitchen. You know, oh, look at, but mm, she got the BDPs and the da 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 and the blah blah blah. Which, as you know, I mean, you know. Those are, I mean, again, if I have any reference um, to my African friends, uh, we usually have like a couple of little peas in the edge area, era. <laughs> so so I, I, I find that, you know, the, the reinforcement of that makes it extremely difficult as we are formulating our ideas about self, to your point of self-hatred, to like the, the thing at, at our hair as it grows out of our heads naturally. And we're constantly almost sort of beaten down and by not seeing the, the positive of it. So it, we don't get any messages to reinforce growing that, that level of comfort and acceptance of ourselves. Um, I went, when I went natural, it was partly because I wanted my niece to see, because nobody in my family really had natural hair. They didn't have soft hair. Like, they didn't really have my texture, I gotta be honest. Um, everybody with my texture straightened their hair. And um, I, I thought it was very important for her to see that. And, you know, she was, you know, as she was growing up, she loved her auntie and her auntie, I would, I would wear my hair out intentionally, not in braids or anything when I was around her. And, um, and I thought that was important, but I will tell you the process for me was really difficult. I mean, me getting my hair like this, it was always like, oh God, this is sticking out. Oh, oh, what, why isn't that, you know? And there was a long time before I felt comfortable with my hair like this. And okay. felt that I looked pretty. And there are even so, days that I do think I look harder when my hair is like this. I'll be totally honest. Harder, harder. In a gangster type way, okay. <laughs> so, so you know what, what you just said um, could call for a lot of response. Um, I guess the one thing I will say as a as a father, what I took away from that, uh, and I and I heard you talk about the hormones raging and then, uh, people you might have been interested in, and even the other images. But what I took from that was. Uh, you have to be very careful about the the messages that you you give at home um, because I would you know I, I I think if you had a different message at home that was contradicted by even the people you were interested in or what you saw in the media that message at home would have rang loudest to you. Um, home just reinforced what you got from the so outside you're, world. Okay, um, your connection so broke up. I, I'm you. Thank you for telling, I'm thanking you for, <clears throat> see, they trying to stop me from saying this <laughs> I positive know. stuff. Everything, um, blah, 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 it's like blah, 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 outside world. I was like, oh, so snap. This, 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 is, this is all messed up because of the connection. <laughs> but anyway, I was just going to say thank you for sharing that story because it just told me as a father, I have to be very hyper, hypersensitive to the messages that are communicated at home, either intentionally or right. unintentionally. 
So, yeah. so really, as a parent, you cannot have any unintentional messages. You have to really think about everything that you say to your kids or say around your kids. So I just wanted to thank you for that. Oh. Um, and, and I understand exactly what you're saying. Um, I understand that it is very, very difficult. And, you know, sometimes we're taught to hate, to hate ourselves. Um, it's not all our doing. Sometimes you're actually taught that. And what's a shame is, and what I loved about the, 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 the movement, what I hear of the movement in the 60s and the whole black, black power, um, black is beautiful movement was that I think for a slice of time, we really did preach that and believe that. Um, at least I, li I, didn't, I didn't live during that time, but I like to think that. So I always, you know, wish that time would come back. Uh, and in some slices, I think it has. I mean, I, I do think black women across the world um, are, con are considered the queens across the world. Uh, you know, when I go to foreign lands, um, I see how people look at black women. And um, to me, it is with a lot of admiration. Um, black women are beautiful. And I think the world recognizes that. The, the place that recognizes it the least is here in the United States, or at least they acknowledge it the least. Uh, but maybe that's changing with, you know, a couple of Miss USAs in a row. Uh, you have to you have to give some credit for that, um, but we still have a long way to go because there's still a lot of people in the beauty parlor every week, my wife included, and trying trying to get that hair looking a certain way, um, and I th I do think that's unfortunate, and you know, maybe I'm one of those guys that talk about all the money that's spent in the beauty salon. Um, but I, I wouldn't be one of those guys talking about losing my ring and kinked up hair. Uh, <laughs> I find that actually pretty funny. <laughs> That's why I was in Chris Rock's movie. Yeah, I got to see the movie. <laughs> I need to see the movie. And I, I probably should have watched it before we had this this, this episode. Um, so where do we go with all this? How do you know? So what, what's, what's, what's the action to take away? All right. Well, I, I think we, um, as we talked about. What we'll, we're going to try to do is um, send out through social media a survey to try to right. get some understanding of um, maybe not even, you know, getting to self-hatred right away, but trying to understand how um, our hair, Black women's hair, affects them emotionally. Um, and, and, you know, because that does have, if it's not hatred, it, it some level causes stress. Right, because there is this sort of, um, I guess, contrast between what you feel like you want to do potentially and what you can do, and what you know you're, you're, you're you feel constricted by. Because I know that you know some of the questions we have in our survey is about, um, you know, uh, how do people feel about it at work? Because I know some women feel like, just like I talked about. And I think this was in Chris Rock's movie, I don't remember, or maybe it might have been one, a female comedian, I don't want to misappropriate this, but basically they were like, well, when our hair is not relaxed, white people can't relax. So <laughs> there is this concept that when we wear our natural hair, white people are very afraid that they're going to get the angry black woman, or the militant black woman. Or the, so there's a perception that we just don't want to even deal with that if we just relax it or, you know, in some way give them, you know, some, some, some ease by virtue of our hair, that we'll have an easier path within that space. And I, I have heard that from women, and I'll tell you, in some instances, I would actually agree. Just be, and I would base that on, to be honest, when I've been in interview, you know, situations, and, you know, they're talking about this particular interviewee, and she had natural hair, and you know, of course, they don't say that. They they kind of da, 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 find da, something da. else to talk about. But I'm like, mm, I didn't, I, I don't see it because again, I didn't have that sort of perception. But um, so so in a lot of ways, I guess my answer to the question, I guess to close for me, my answer to the question is: of black do black women, you know, display the greatest self hatred um, through their hair? Is I think that a lot of times they do. 
and it is both conscious and subconscious uh, for some for people and for some people it's more subconscious than that and for some people it's very conscious um, and they do it for you know very particular reasons so uh, but I think it does cause a ripple effect that I think is ultimately or could be classified as self-hatred. Okay. Well, I don't know if there's any more that needs to be said. I, well, I, think, I mean, also oh, the question was just for me or are you not going to answer? Are you scared well, somebody I, I can mean, come I, knocking at your window? No, I, I, I mean, I think it was, it was my answer was kind of given in the way the question was phrased. Um, I mean, I, I definitely think that, I definitely think that that is Black women's biggest display. Um, unless relationship trumps it, um, which, you know, I, I think a lot of self-hatred is displayed in the relationships that Black women allow themselves to get into. Um, but I actually think hair is number one. And, I want to get into that topic so bad, but we're waiting. <laughs> And, and and again, you know, a lot of a lot of a lot of these are phrased in a racial context, but I really don't think it's racial. Um, I, I think this issue can be boiled down into what uh, I don't know what do you call it, the fashion industry has has formulated as the ideal or the idea of what beauty is, and if you don't comply with that, you try your best to comply with it. And maybe this is a, an extreme example um, because the, one of the greatest divergences for black people in their hair texture, uh, or for most black people in their hair texture. But, you know, white people suffer the same thing. A lot of them going into the bathroom and sticking their fingers down their throats to, to throw up so they could be, you know, a certain size. That's a form of self hate, a, a high form of self hate. Um, so maybe it's not racial. Maybe it's just human but we, nature. No, 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 no. We said display self hatred through their hair. Correct. So you that don't think true. that black women that is their greatest self hatred? I would say white women their greatest self hatred is their bodies, because all of this is fine, according to the quote unquote standard. Oh, okay. <laughs> according okay. to the standard, I mean, yeah, no, no, no. I'm not. Oh no, no, no. Because <laughs> two, two things. I'm sorry. Two things. <laughs> What you said about it, if it was more positive in my home around my hair, I would be more comfortable. And I agree with that because the other messages I got around everything else were positive. And that kept me afloat through some various times when I was around people that did not have my body shape and things like that. Um, the second thing is you, I actually didn't answer your question about kink. So there is a new classification system, which I don't know if it's good or bad, to be honest. I'm, 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 the jury's still out for me. Who comes up with these things? The, the Hoover Tower? It's, now, um, you know, no, I'm, I'm pretty sure it is not the Hoover Tower doing the black hair classification. Okay. <laughs> but, Essence? But, but I, and I actually, it's a good question. Raina could answer that question. But, the, you know, the idea is that there's a spectrum of textures and it goes from how loose your curl is to the shape of your curl. And the shape of your curl is either sort of an S, which is a very soft shape, or a Z, which is, okay. and the tighter it is, and the Z-er it is, the more kink, I guess I would say, because that's the type of hair that it breaks off very easily because it's not, you know, kind of as soft a curl. And it tends to, um, you know, and again, this is based on the classification because I read on it for the survey. Um, and it also, you know, draws up a lot. So, you know, my hair could get, you know, long, but it would still draw up to this when it gets wet. So, um, and uh, anyway, so that's just so, an answer so to it, your question about it's, kink. It's straight, is, wavy, curly, and kinky. Is the four classifications? No, there's actually like it's got a one, two, three. Okay. Well, I'll post a link to it on the on the video. There we go. Yes. So yeah, it's it's they they've tried to because it's kind of layered. You can have looseness and S or Z and da 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 da. So it's got a couple of different. 
And this is to sell your hair products? Yeah, there are hair products that, uh, and so I don't know who came up with it, but you know, I don't know if it was industry wide, but yeah, the intent was that certain hair products are better for certain types than others. That's pretty good. We should have thought of that. <laughs> There's lots of other things we can think of. <laughs> right, 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 right. So, so where does that leave us? Um, that leaves us with asking people to fill out the survey and um and then we'll have probably a follow-up show or something about it and uh well hopefully we don't have to redo this show because they tried to stop us from telling the truth um i'll see what i can do editing wise <laughs> hopefully that's not a recurring thing but we'll, <laughs> we'll work on the connections uh it's a very interesting topic uh the, the goal of all of these topics is to i don't know educate entertain edutain I guess is the word I like to use. Maybe I stole that from KRS One. <laughs> Big ups to Boogie Down Productions. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but good. And, so, uh, so we've now put a pin in what was it? Love and self hatred through relationships. Different that, topics. Those they well they sound different they, but they sound like they may meet in the middle somewhere so that'll be well they could probably meet but it'd probably take a lot of time to <laughs> un unpack unpack both of those oh yeah there's all there's definitely baggage in that so unpacking is going to be a challenge there we go <laughs> <laughs> all right all right booty no not stupid booby. questions booty not booby don't stupid questions <laughs> signing off good night <laughs>